here's one person who grew up in a TV studio who does not like spotlights. <laughs> I was just telling Merrick because, uh, and, and the way to speak in microphone so we don't blast the whole room is really like isang dangkal away from the mic because it's a very sensitive mic. I was telling Merrick how I grew up in a studio since I was 18 years old with all the spotlights and five, at the time, five stations, five TV monitors blaring in our faces, in our ears for 10 to 12 hours a day, and studio lights facing me for several hours during live shows and tapings. But eventually, like now, I like my quiet, private space, no noise and no spotlights, which is the opposite of how I grew up. And I actually learned before my speech something, a coping mechanism, which I will forever remember because of this event today from Dr. Malubai, because I told him how I suffered from vertigo in 2004, which was cured by my very good inner specialist doctor, Dr. Charlotte Chong, but eventually returned, and then now it's cured, but I should stay away from noisy places which traumatizes my inner ear. But Dr. Malubay said that he has a green solution to my uh, already cured vertigo, and that's the closure of the endocrine tube, at least partial, by smiling. Because when I smile, he says that the endocrine, is it endocrine? Endo I'm really not a doctor because your handwriting doctor is like a doctor's writing. So, you stay here. You stay here and shoot. Okay, I'm glad you corrected me. Thank you for that. You stay here. Shoot closes a little when I smile. And so I enter this room smiling from ear to ear. It's also good because sometimes, mm, without my knowing. So, from now on, whenever I go to loud places, which I try to avoid. That's why I even asked them to lower the audio earlier, and I requested the announcer to please limit the volume. This, this is a very sensitive microphone. And he says, Senator, the way to cope is smile. I said, why? <laughs> and so I learned something new today. Also, Merrick, uh, uh, has been a good, good friend, uh, a colleague in government I greatly admire, an environmental warrior such as myself, and we have our great dreams for the nation. And he knows that as chairman of the Finance Committee, I'm a highly stressed person, especially during this month until the budget is passed till December. And I was happy to learn a new term from Merrick because I told him how more than 50 provisions in our 2016 General Appropriations Act is climate and environment and culture related. And he said, I mainstream environment and climate. He said, call it not mainstreaming climate, but green stream. So I'm happy to tell this hall of environmental and health advocates and medical specialists that we have a Philippine budget that has green stream climate and environmental provisions. I don't think it's ever happened that we have the chairman of the finance committee incorporating general and special provisions on climate and environment. What do I mean? Example. Meron ba tayo nakitang budget sa ating panahon, Merit, noong ikaw congressman pa rin, or kabinete, na nakasaad na kailangan may gulayan sa paaralan na dapat ay sinusunod ang ating Republic Act 900 on the segregation of waste of source, recycling, and composting. Does it actually say that every barangay, every structure in government and the private sector should have rainwater catchments? to comply with the 1981 Rainwater Collection Act. Have we ever had a budget that actually says that every government agency and department should have a budget for climate change mitigation and adaptation? I can go on and on, and no less that the United Nations has seen and approved and commended the more than 50 provisions we have 
in a 2016 GAA, and this will be more in the 2017 General Appropriations Act. But this is not yet my speech. This is just the introduction to my speech. It's very long. I don't know if you'd like to hear it on a Sunday. I also don't usually break my weekends because that's when I do my organic compost. Weekends also is when I breathe fresh air, whatever's left of it, when I go to Tagaytay in my little inherited organic farm, when I plant uh, my own salad greens like um, arugula and lettuce, which I sell in a weekend market. I earned yesterday 1,600 pesos, and I was so happy with the sweetest 1,000 pesos of my life because uh, my neighbor uh, had a weekend market. She did not charge us for the stalls, and I harvested and sold it, not using plastic bags, because I'm also the author of the No Plastic Bag Act, which has not yet passed, but still, we namin sa dahon. And these are really organic, uh, freshly harvested and organic veggies. And um, when I came in the afternoon, sinabi ng aking girl in Bantay, na tinuruan ko. Before that, she didn't know how to do compost. She had to buy. Uh, I taught her the institutionalization of segregation of waste at source, recycling, and composting. That's a different story altogether. I hope that everyone present in this room today actually implements it in your homes, in your communities, in your schools, in your offices. I hope this building does it. I want to inspect their kitchen or their uh, comfort rooms if they actually have four bins, because I have four bins in my home, in my office, in my farm. First, for kitchen waste, food waste, you have a compost pit where you throw it, where you can do your own compost. Maglalagay kayo ng food waste noon sa nababaong sa lupa, lagyan ng soil at lagyan ng dry leaves. You make your own compost at three months of your own compost. The second bin in my home would be for paper waste, which I recycle at the back, and carton, which you can recycle into boxes for gifts. The third is for bote lata plastic which I recycle, the mga Coke litro, although I don't drink soft drinks, you cut it, of course, those are the pots I use, or the bottles my 90-year-old auntie paints and makes it beautiful uh, uh, vases, etc. And the fourth is residual waste. Yung mga hindi na kaya recycle or decompose, yan yung mga sachets is bad. Sachets are bad because maliit yan, it really goes into uh, into many places where it should not. So you know, lata or residual. So if we are to follow the law, every community, every home, because it should be a source, should have four bins. Drop by my office without any warning, you will see four bins there. Um, I can't say come to my home, it's my only private space. Four bins. I inspect in our kitchenette in my Senate office every time. Ask my staff. But meron tissue waste, sa food waste bin, whoo, yun na ang Monday, buong linggo, mainit na ulo. And I tell my staff, if you can't even implement Republic Act 9003 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Law, which I wrote in 98, passed in January 2001, and today only 25% of our local governments are actually implementing it in 2016. And people say it's a failed law. But I ask them, if one barangay of the 42,000 barangays in this country can actually implement it, why can't the others? If one fourth of our local governments can do it, why can't the others? So, taman ang mga dahilan, sumulod na lang kayo. So, that's just one of my many environmental laws. I'm not certain if all these laws were actually mentioned. Clean Air Act, Solid Waste Management Law, Clean Water Act, Climate Change Law, which created the Commission on Climate Change, People's Survival Fund, which is the funding mechanism of the Climate Change Law, Environmental Education Awareness Act, and the Renewable Energy Law, and National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Act. So, I go to my speech. You know, another thing, for energy efficiency and conservation, all air cons should be put at thermostat level at 25 degrees. Una, makakatikid tayo. Pangalawa, hindi kailangan ginawin. Diba? We live in a tropical country because I'm a no-air con person. Believe it or not, 
I don't have air conditioner in my bedroom. I only have two electric fans facing the wall. And in my office in the Senate, which is as cold as this, palagi ko silang pinapagsabihan, bakit tayo kailangan ginawin? Nakagun yan. Nagihinaan ng aircon, hindi ba? Or i-thermostat nyo, hindi raw pwede. Kinausap ko yung admin ng building sa GSIS kasi the Senate is just ready. Kaya naman pala. Di nakakatipil. Ganun lang eh, di ba? Okay. Inibitan nyo kasi ang, inibitan nyo ako sa linggo, lecture ang dating nyo. <laughs> okay. So it's really with great pleasure, um, Secretary Merrick, Dr. Frederick Francisco, Dr. Hill Vicente, Dr. Federico Malubay, Dr. Ireneo Bernardo, Dr. Fresco Yepin Don, um, Dr. Rodora Cruz, um, Mr. Alex Chu, and all of you present here today, that it's good to be here with you in the healthcare sector. I see this as an opportunity to build stronger partnerships with you, as Merrick does, I learned with your association, to create solutions for the growing social, economic, and development challenges caused by environmental degradation and disasters arising from natural hazards turbocharged by climate change. I think I have a PowerPoint. One way to perceive how the climate works is to allude to it, like the engineering of the human body, which you know very well, complex and interconnected. The body is an amazing, amazing creation, made of parts that are integral to making it function. Millions of pathways combine to form cells, tissues, and organs that allow us to be human. It is the same way that our climate and our planet's environment are interconnected. Even a minor change in the climate creates impacts that are large and encompassing, affecting every living thing. Now, what is the connection between climate change and public health, which is your field? Climate change, as you know, did not happen overnight. Despite the climate deniers, and there are many in our midst, not just in our country, but in the world. And it has taken us super typhoons, tsunamis and storm surge, sinking islands, parched and unusable land due to El Nino, staggering numbers of lives displaced and perished to visualize what scientists and environmental activists have been warning us for decades, that among other effects, and I quote, climate change will be the biggest global health threat of the 21st century. It would help if the air con is put the thermostat. Thank you. As climate change alters rainfall patterns and brings deadly, intensified, and frequent calamities, it will affect public health. Governments, businesses, organizations, the private sector will face conundrums that include the spreading of deadly diseases and viruses, decrease in the well-being of citizens, not to mention medical relief needed with each catastrophe. According to a study conducted by the World Bank, the average global cost of adaptation in the health sector for the prevention and treatment of diarrhea and malaria alone will reach 1.3 billion US dollars to 1.6 billion per year over 2010 to 2050. A United Nations framework or the UNFCC study estimates the adaptation cost in the health sector ranging from $2 billion to $14 billion over 2020, 2010 to 2030. But what has caused this constant warming of the Earth's temperature that has led to the climate crisis? Key findings of the IPCC, and you're all very much aware of the IPCC, this is the more than 1,000 scientists that helped Vice President Al Gore win his Nobel laureate and they are the ones that keep on studying our climate. They feel that climate change is unequivocal and that there is a 95% likelihood that human activity is a cause of global warming. Human activity, tayong lahat sa mundo, released, it's unimaginable, 545 gigatons, I don't even know what that means, gigatons of carbon dioxide the main greenhouse gas from 
1750 to 2011. In the last decade, that's what we're more familiar with, 90% of the rise in carbon dioxide levels was due to the burning of fossil fuels. And unless drastic cuts are introduced, global temperatures are projected to increase by 0.3 degrees to 4.8 degrees Celsius by the end of this century. Now you understand why the Paris Agreement stated that the increase in the global temperature should be well below the 2 degrees Celsius mark and why we, the Philippines, joined other vulnerable nations in the CBF or the Climate Vulnerable Forum and uh, what is the other organization of the vulnerable nations led by the Marshall Islands, head by Minister Broome, Yung HAC, the High Ambition Coalition, when we were mounting 1.5 degrees. Nangyari na ang Yolanda, Sendong at Pablo. Nangyari na ang Kondoy at ang Storm Surge at Tsunami. Hindi lang sa Pilipinas, sa iba't ibang lugar ng mundo. Wala pang 1 degree Celsius ang rise. Now, it has breached the 1 degree Celsius. So when you think about it, the 1.5 degrees is already the best scenario the world can do with these industrialized nations mitigating and we, the small non-emitters, both mitigating and adapting, but still 1.5 will be even worse than Yolanda for the world, not just for the Philippines. So that's the connection. Now, the healthcare sector has also contributed to the climate crisis. What do I mean? According to Healthcare Without Harm, hospitals use twice as much energy per square foot as a traditional office space, especially since hospitals run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Many healthcare facilities occupy aging and energy inefficient buildings and generate pounds of waste every day. So it would be best if we could have green hospitals like the LLDA Green Building where you are powered either by solar, wind, whichever is doable. The WHO has discovered various health risks caused by unsafe hospital or disposal of healthcare waste such as contaminated needles and syringes, and the improper and unsafe disposal, and I'm quoting, of contaminated needles and syringes may lead to dangerous consequences because it can be reused, hope not, sold, hope not, to be used again, since these materials may be scavenged from waste areas and dump sites which are already outlawed under Republic Act 9003, which was enacted into law in 2001. Data from WHO show that in 2010, injections with contaminated needles and syringes cost 33,800 new HIV infections, 1.7 million hepatitis B infections, and 315,000 hepatitis infections. That's not my study, it's a quote. A waste management assessment of the WHO and UNICEF conducted in 2015 in 24 countries showed that 58% of the sampled healthcare facilities had adequate systems in place for the safe disposal of healthcare waste, which means that about 42% of healthcare facilities do not have proper waste disposal methods. How can the healthcare sector turn these issues and challenges into opportunities for positive action towards climate change adaptation and mitigation? Again, the Healthcare Without Harm and Practice Green Health Toolkit for the healthcare sector aims to increase participation in addressing climate change. Opportunities for action are the following areas. First, in transportation. Healthcare facilities rely heavily on transport to move patients, workers, supplies, and waste. Hospitals 
can reorganize their fleets to include high fuel efficiency, hybrid and alternative fuel ambulances, shuttle vans, and supply transport vehicles. Second, in the energy sector, healthcare facilities can make their operations more energy efficient by using LEDs and energy efficient equipment. Turning down thermostats, such as what I said today, which I hope this hotel has followed by now, which I told the Senate building while we have our plenary, while our staff, Brian, then who's always sick, and my staff are always sick, and, and senators cough because it's too cold. It's 12 degrees in the Senate when it's a 32 degree country. I mean, it's really crazy. And all we need to do para makatipid at hindi magkasakit ay i-turn yung thermostat. It's a no-brainer. So, turning down thermostats, even by just one or two degrees, can have a big impact on our health, in our corriente, in our electric bills. Hospitals that will be built, refurbished, or retrofitted should incorporate green building principles such as daylighting. Look at these architects. With daylight, sayang yung lahat niyan eh. Ako, hindi ako nagbubukas ng ilaw. Hindi ako nag-aircon. Kasi I bottled my home, floor to ceiling, bintana. Sa labas ng bintana, puro, uh, puro. At hindi ako nag-aircon, maginaw, at electric fan, maniwala, Metro Manila ako. Maniwala mo kayo, hindi. So we need daylight lighting. Natural ventilation. Again, I modeled my home cross ventilation. And I'm solarizing now my roof because my son is a solar entrepreneur who did the home of Congresswoman Acosta, the sister of Mary, her home in Pasay. She told me one day, Solar na ako, Senator, solar pa ba kayo? Na ba kayo? Hindi pa nga eh. Who did your solar roof? Oh, Solar Philippines. I think that's your son. Oh, nga, baka doon nga ako sa anak ko. Yes. So third, waste management. Best practices in waste management include putting up an MRF. I'm certain all of you know what an MRF is. Simple. Ako, recycled lang na kahoy at nakahiwalay. May pangalan, bote lahat na plastic, paper, carton, residual waste, and food waste. Food waste you don't even have. You just bore a hole in a little pit, compost pit, and put it there. Baunin nyo, and that will be the most healthy part of your little garden. Kung walang garden, if you live in a building, uh, put it in pots, and that's where you can do your organic compost. So, we need an MRF and an installation of wastewater treatment systems. Some hospitals are using innovative gas capture technology, which will capture, reclaim, and purify gases used in operating rooms and will then be used by the hospital. The procedure extends gases life cycle, saving money, and reducing GHG emissions. The next is food service. It has been estimated that 18% of all greenhouse gas emissions are associated with meat consumption, and food that come from distant places utilize more energy for transport and preservation resulting to greater carbon emission. Kaya, hindi na ako huwibili ng imported na pakain. Hindi na rin ako makain sa mga hotel na ang mahal-mahal ng pagkain. Bakit pa imported? When you can plant in your home, in your backyard, in your farm, but if you don't have, then you can buy the local produce. I don't buy imported. Eh, ang carbon footprint niyan ni, eh, hindi ba? Mahal pa, hindi pa alam ang pinanggalingan. You can actually plan. I'm not kidding in my backyard, alokbati, kangkong, talbos, ng kamote, patola, malunggay. Bakit hindi? Sa sidewalk, may malunggay ako. Siyempre, yung mga nag-jogging sa labas ng aking, sa kalsada, kinaharvest nila. Kaya wala akong makain sa aking malunggay at isa tutulong ako sila. So they see malunggay trees like soldiers there. Of course, it's polluted in Makati, but still, there are malunggay trees trying to survive. Adobong Kong Kong, I bring it to the Senate as my baon, harvested in the morning for my little garden. It's so easy, actually. So hospitals can lessen GHG emissions by reducing the amount of meat protein on their menus, buying local, organic, and in-season food, 
in composing food waste and eliminating bottled water. I'm glad to see there are no bottled waters here. Napakasama ng bottled water. Mas mabuti. No, because imagine, we are supposed to drink 10 to 12 bottles a day. 10 to 12. 10. 10 bottled water a day. Unang masakit sa bulsa, mahal. Pangalawa, saan yung itatapon lahat yan? Hindi ba? Wow! We have 100 million people. So, just um, either desalinate or uh, clean your tap water. Um, Pakuluan or boil it. Yes? Yes. Yeah. I have my own uh, pepos. Uh, I just refill it with mine. And I don't use bottled water. So, really, I'm back for advertising of imported food, of bottled water, of air conditioning, and of lights which are not LED. Really. Kasi ako back to nature, back to basics. Hindi ba ang bingo? Nung panahon nyo, mas matanda ka sa akin? Mas simple ang buhay, hindi ba? Oo eh. Hangin. Libre ang hangin eh. Araw. Libre ang araw eh. Lupa, magtanim. Kumain, organic. Bakit chemical? Hmm. I have a friend, she's a lawyer, and her husband, uh, they were want, they're renting a 1,000 square meter land, medyo malaki, pero mostly bahay. But their backyard is uh, just 100 square meters. If this is a garden, she showed me the photo of the house they're renting. Instead of a garden, they made it a forest garden, an edible garden. Lahat ng pagkain ng bahay kubo, kantahin nyo. Lahat ng vegetable dyan, or pinakbet. I call it bahay kubo or pinakbet. Meron sila. And have 70 native chickens. Wow! Kinabubuhay na nila yon. And they're able to harvest 50 kilos of vegetable a week for their family. They even sell it. And it's their business. Therefore, what did actually? Attorney Pala at Tabelasturi? Yes. Of the slow food movement, Nicola? Yes. They're very passionate uh, people. She's a lawyer. A slow food movement. Because I for slow food, I never eat in fast food. Only during campaigns. Pag walang madaanan, eh, yan, kakain ng Jollibee for the good. But really, imagine what goes into all this fast food. So again, I'm bad advertising for fast food because I really believe in the slow food movement. Um, yeah. You know, I'm your own speaker, yeah. I don't. So, uh, but minsan minsan naman, kamahay ng fast food, di ba? Hindi mga perfect ang buhay. So, addressing the climate crisis needs a whole of society approach. We need the government to lead. I think to the best of my ability, I, I do that. In the past three terms, that's 1998-2006, uh, 18 years. By the time I graduated from three terms in the Senate, I would have been in the Senate for 21 years. And before that, 20 years in television, advocating, lawmaking, implementing. But we can't do it alone. Neri cannot clean up Laguna Lake by himself. I cannot change a country of 100 million by myself, even with a great loss commended by the United Nations. You have to help me. So this lecture today will not stop today. It will be an interactive, hopefully, a partnership to implement all the laws I mentioned. We need a whole-of-society approach, including you, the healthcare sector. You must give me your wholehearted commitment and take action immediately. In the Senate, we continue to improve legislation and practice our oversight functions to ensure the implementation of the laws I mentioned. I already mentioned all the laws towards building a healthy, resilient, sustainable, and climate-adaptive nation. Hindi ko na uulitin yung mga binanggit kong batas in the past three terms. Why? We only live in one planet. There is no planet B. We should all realize we don't even own the environment. We are just stewards of the earth, which the next generations will inherit from us. Would you like our children and our grandchildren to say, na pakasama naman ang aming mga magulang at ang aming mga lorot lorot at mga ninuno? Inubos na ang mga puno at ang kabutuhan ay kalbo na 
at ang lawa ng Laguna at Manila Bay at ang Pasig River ay naging poso negro ng Metro Manila. Ng ating mga basura ay recklessly tinatapon sa mga kanal, estero at lawa at ilog at bahi at karagatan. At ang ating mga corals sa bahay ng ating isda ay patuloy na namamatay. Do you know that in my hearing two days ago as Chair of Finance funding the DNR budget, I was informed that we have less than 1% of our 27 million hectares of corals all over the country. 1% less of our corals are in excellent condition and just 5% remaining which are in good condition and the others merit are degraded, deteriorating, dead, or dying. Pag wala ng bahay at isda, para ng isda. And we are an agricultural and a fishing population. More than 70% of our 100 million population are rural dwellers who are either fisher folks or agricultural workers. Patuloy na naghihira pang ating masisika at mangingisda dahil sa ocean acidification, dahil sa illegal forms of fishing, also because of the climate crisis. And so, we must also do the same rehabilitation we are doing for our marine ecosystem as we are doing for our terrestrial. So, we are mere stewards of our Earth. It is not for us to exploit and use as if there was no tomorrow. Each of us, as an opportunity to make a difference for our future. We must take hold of that opportunity to responsibly manage our environment. Let us make the Earth a sustainable, safe, and healthy planet for all of us and the future generations. Let it be said that during our watch, as a senator, as a secretary, head of an important agency, as medical specialists, as broadcasters and media practitioners, as citizens of the earth and responsible stewards of nature, that we did our best, that we used our power, our influence, our talent, and our time and resources to make a difference in the lives and future of our children and the next, next generations to come. Maganda umaga po. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Honorable Senator Robin Dubarba.